Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan for Neat and Tangled and I will be starting off by showing you the new September 2019 release and I'll also be creating this card from start to finish using one of the new stamp sets and also doing some watercoloring with my Zig markers. To start off, this is the first stamp set I'm showing you. This is called Moon Magic. This is a four by six stamp set. It comes with four beautiful images and seven sentiments. It also has a coordinating die to die cut out the moon and the moth. And then some of the sentiments include let your light shine, make a wish, you are magnificent. Our next stamp set is moon and stars and this is a three by four stamp set so it has one image and one sentiment it coordinates beautifully with the rest of the release and then we have a starry sky red rubber stamp this measures four and a quarter by five and a half so perfect for our backgrounds and also back in stock in the store is the like magic sequence mix this is honestly one of my favorites it is so gorgeous it's perfect for any background to start off my card i am going to be doing a lot of ink blending i have cracked pistachio salty ocean blueprint sketch and chipped sapphire i'm going to be using the moon magic stamp set and it was just a begging to have an ink blended background. So that is what I'm going to do. I start with cracked pistachio and I am using some life-changing blender brushes from Picket Fence Studios, starting with just a uh, light circular motion in the center of my card. And I will warn you, this is gonna look terrible before it looks good. So just bear with me in this. When it comes to ink blending, especially on the Nina Solar White Cardstock 80 pound, which is what I'm using, it takes a little bit. You have to build up your color to really get it to blend. So next here, I'm adding Salty Ocean. Now in the end, you really don't see a lot of the Salty Ocean. It's more of a transition color for me. It helps blend that cracked pistachio into the background. And that cracked pistachio is really what is going to make our background glow. So we have that really light color in the middle, and then I'm gonna create a really dark sky in the background, and that's really going to give this glowing effect. So now my third color is the Blueprint Sketch, and I'm going around all of those edges, blending into the salty ocean. And you notice I do have a blending brush for each color, mainly because I'm gonna be going back over this. That is what's going to help this be kind of a seamless blend, is adding more color on top and just getting that to blend together. And then my last color is going to be the chipped sapphire. Now, if you really wanted to have more of a dramatic effect, you could add black soot to your edges but I was happy with the four colors that I chose. So I'm just going around all of those edges. And you'll notice I'm working on a waffle flower media mat. This is a silicone mat, which I've really been enjoying working on, mainly because if you notice, my cardstock is not moving. Because it's silicone, It my cardstock stays in place. It's not sliding all over the place. I barely have to touch it. I can just ink blend and then I can wipe my mat clean when I'm all done. So really enjoying this media mat for water coloring, for ink blending, and you can heat emboss on top of it too. So after I went back over all of those colors, created that seamless blend, I'm going to bring in some Hero Arts White Glimmer Metallic Ink. I'm adding a couple drops into that well along with a few drops of water. And then I do also put a couple drops on its own well, and that just helps soften my bristles if I haven't used my paintbrush in a while. Then I'll mix the water and that glimmer metallic ink together, and I'm going to flick this all over my background, and that really is going to create that night sky feel. I do also uh, pull back up so I go higher with my paintbrush, and that's gonna help give me smaller flicks onto my background, so I have a variety of sizes on here. And then here is just a real quick look on the blend that I created. 
and that glimmery background. So I will set that off on the side to dry for a little while and then work on my watercoloring. Now off screen I did go ahead and stamp my image onto some Archa's cold press watercolor cardstock and I did this in champagne embossing powder from Gina K Designs. I'm going to be using my zig markers so I have here number 031 cobalt blue, number 032 Persian blue, number 084 deep violet and number 902 natural gray. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that natural gray. Now I did go to Pinterest and Google and I looked up some different pictures. And what I had found is this piece right here is um, I'm going to personally color gray. That was the image that I had found that really caught my attention. So I'm laying down just a little bit of color with my marker. I'm taking my watercolor brush and I dipped it in water kind of tapped off the excess onto a cloth and I'm dragging that color out. So it's dark towards the body and then it's going to get lighter as I drag that color out. And I'll repeat the same step on the other side. Just a little bit of color dipped in water, tap off on my cloth and then I'm just going to drag that color out. So this is a lot of trial and error. Uh, I've been doing some watercoloring quite often actually with my Zig markers, so I'm getting a really good feel for them. I really enjoy it. It does not really take that long to color your images, and I really love the look. Another thing is I have really enjoyed coloring on the Archa's uh, cold pressed paper, mainly because I'm getting a really smooth blend with the watercoloring. There is a variety of cardstocks that you can use. You can just straight out color and blend with your Zig markers, but I really like this look of the watercolor. Now I did speed up the video uh, just because it does take a little while, uh, but what I'm doing now is I'm going through the rest of the moth and I'm taking that cobalt blue. So I added a little bit of color towards the middle uh, by the body I wet my paintbrush, I tap it off on the side, and then I drag that color out. And I do that through the entire thing. Now one of the key things that I found very helpful is having this base layer. I typically start with a really light color, so in this case it's the cobalt blue. And I'm not real concerned how well it blends out. I just kind of need it damp. Um, you could just do water, but I didn't want my color to spread too much if I was doing the wet on wet technique. I want to have that control. And so that is one of the reasons, another reason why I chose the Arches Cold Press is because it is a watercolor cardstock. It is meant to handle layers of color and water. Now for my uh, brush that I'm using, this is a Royal Langnickel Zen brush and it's a number three. You'll kind of learn after a while uh, your brushes, how they hold water, how they handle blending. It's, it's a lot of practice. It's a lot of trial and error. And this is the one that I have found I enjoy, especially with these smaller areas, like on these wings. So just a finishing up there in that little bit. And then I am going to come back in with some darker colors. And that's where it's really going to take shape. Now originally I had colored this the first time and I had done some purples. When I had finished this second layer with the darker blue, which is the Persian blue that I'm using right now, uh, I really liked it with just the blues. So you're, you're going to see pictures of where I have the, the moth with the purple in it and then you're going to see pictures with this one. Not a huge difference, but enough for me to take another set of pictures. So you'll see that. Now with that Persian blue, I'm actually going kind of every other line on the wings. And this is where it's a real trial, trial and error. So I'm adding just a little bit of color and dragging that out over that lighter blue. Now I don't want that to overpower my lighter layer. So I'm really being careful how much water I have on my brush. That's why I tap off onto a cloth and I'm making sure it is really, really light when I drag it out to the end of the wings. 
Now you could really use any type of coloring medium that you want with this. This is really, the sky's the limit with it. Uh, one of the reasons I chose Zigs is because I have them. Uh, and I want to make use of some of the tools that have been collecting dust in my drawer. And you really don't need a lot. And that's the same thing with any type of water coloring is you really don't need a lot because you can spread that out with the water. So you're not going to have to worry about refills or replacing anything. You just add that little dab of color and then you can spread that out and really get that gradient effect. Once I finished with my wings, I'm going to do the body and that I'm doing in the natural gray. So I added some color on the left hand side and then just spreading that out with my water and my paintbrush. And I added a little bit on those uh, dots on the wings. Now I could really go on and on with this moth. I did come back in and add just a little bit darker of a color uh, just for some more contrast. Like I said, I decided to skip that deep violet only because I was really loving these two blues. And that's kind of the beauty of the zigs and watercoloring is you kind of create your own colors when you're blending. So really happy with how this turned out. Uh, loving that embossed in that champagne, which is uh, kind of a gold tone. And then once I finish coloring, like I said, that third layer, you really don't have to do. It wasn't necessary. I was just adding that little bit more of contrast. So once that's done here, I'll give you a close up look of this and you'll be able to see the blending that was done and just the close up of those colors. Definitely one of my favorite things to do right now is this type of water coloring. So I'll set that off on the side to dry a little bit before I do any die cutting. And I'm actually going to go and work on my sentiment. This is a sentiment off of the Moon Magic stamp set. And I'm going to stamp it onto some pitch black cardstock from Hero Arts. I just placed that sentiment in my Misty Stamping Tool prepped the cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and then inking that up with an embossing ink. Then I'm going to sprinkle on some of that champagne embossing powder, kind of tie in with my image and then I'll go ahead and heat set that until it's nice and melted. And another beautiful part of using this media mat is you can heat set on that. Now once my image was dry, I'm going to go ahead and use that coordinating die, line that up, and I'm actually holding it in place in three different spots with the purple tape just because it is watercolored and it is warped just a little bit. I wanted to make sure that held down really well. And then using some black foam squares, I'll attach that to my background. I'm using black because I'm running out of my white foam squares, so either color works as long as it's popped up for dimension. And then the same thing with my sentiment. I just added some of the black foam squares to the back of that sentiment that I had trimmed down into a thin strip and added that underneath my, butt my moth. Now I'm bringing in some of the Like Magic Sequence Mix. And I'm just using three because that helps just in card design, usually is in odd numbers, but certainly you can use whatever you feel like using. And I attached those down with my Lawn Fawn liquid glue. And to finish it up, I am using some of the Nouveau Dream Drops in Cloud 9. And I added that right to the center of my sequence. So here is a close-up look of my finished card that I really enjoyed creating. I love coloring this in. I hope you enjoyed today's project and the new release from Neat and Tangled. All the supplies will be listed down below in the video description. And I will also have more details over on my personal blog. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed what you see and would like to see more videos. Thanks again for stopping by and I'll see you next time.